Are you thinking about going on testosterone replacement therapy or TRT? Whether you're considering it for boosting your energy, mood, motivation, or enhancing your sexual function, there's a lot to understand with testosterone replacement therapy, maybe more than you might be thinking. Starting TRT without the full scope of knowledge on what it can do, both the benefits and side effects, is a bit like going to a gym and starting to work out without really knowing how to use the equipment. Sure, you can start and maybe possibly do some good stuff, but you might get injured and end up doing more harm than good. My name is Dr. Taranella and this channel is dedicated to helping you optimize and improve your health. In this video, we're going to discuss what you need to know before starting testosterone. If these videos are adding value to your life and to your health, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to continue getting videos like this. All right, let's jump into the video. So what exactly is TRT or testosterone replacement therapy? Well, we can use the analogy of your body as like a car engine. And in this case, the testosterone is kind of like the oil that prevents the friction in the engine as the pistons are moving back and forth. So we can think of testosterone replacement therapy as adding a little bit of extra oil to an engine that is short, which will allow it to function at full speed with as little friction as possible. Typically, testosterone replacement therapy is used to address or to increase the levels of testosterone in someone that's actually low in testosterone. And so bringing the levels up allows all those processes to move forward. And testosterone is greatly beneficial to the body because it's a bit of a multitasker. It impacts things like muscle growth and bone density to mood, energy, libido, and even fat distribution throughout the body. But how exactly does it do this? How is it possible to carry out all these different functions at the exact same time? Well, there's basically one mechanism involved here. And basically what's happening is the testosterone is activating the androgen receptors. Androgens are basically things like testosterone and testosterone derivatives like dihydrotestosterone. Even DHEA to some extent can activate androgen receptors. And when those androgen receptors are bound to by the androgens, it's going to stimulate the function of that receptor, which has lots of different properties, which we'll discuss here in a minute. Almost all the cells in our body and the tissues in our body have these androgen receptors and some are going to be more densely packed with these androgen receptors than other tissues but without enough of this androgen receptor activity meaning not enough of that testosterone you get less activation of the androgen receptor and that's going to lead to all of the common symptoms that we think of with low testosterone so for instance you may have less activity of the nitric oxide synthase in the blood vessels which can lead to decrease dilation of the arteries, which sometimes can cause higher blood pressure and even erectile dysfunction. You may also have more likelihood or tendency to have plaque build up in the arteries because there's more inflammation going on in the body. You may also have some mood-related things like not enough dopamine, serotonin, and GABA in specific areas of the brain where they're most needed to give you an even mood and balance out your mental health. You may also have more pro inflammatory signals from the immune cells like macrophages leading to more propensity to autoimmune diseases or poor responses to infections. There's also, of course, not enough muscle synthesis leading to what's known as sarcopenia or loss of muscle mass over time, which usually accompanies increased age. And there's also the connection or the production of other hormones that are tightly linked with testosterone or somewhat linked with testosterone like cortisol and estrogen. So these are some of the reasons that having enough testosterone is important. But here's the thing. Testosterone replacement therapy isn't just about adding more testosterone. I mean, it is to some extent, but it's also about knowing how it integrates with your overall health and how much you need in certain situations. So it's a bit more like a recipe and adding enough seasoning to that recipe. Too much, you're going to have problems. It's not going to taste very good. Too little, and the dish may be a bit bland. And so it's more about getting the right proportion of testosterone in your body for your unique situation based on your symptoms and other things that are going on with you. And so there's definitely ways to know how much you need or, or if you're getting too much and what that balance is for you, which brings us to the next part of what you should know before starting testosterone replacement therapy, and that is more so about the medical evaluation. 
So before you jump into taking testosterone replacement therapy, it's important to check your hormones and know what your hormones are. But it's not just about your levels of testosterone. Some people feel just fine and don't really have any overt symptoms with lowish levels of testosterone and others feel much worse with the same level of testosterone. I've seen this in my practice. So symptoms are important for sure in getting the balance right and also getting the clues that your body is actually lacking that androgen receptor activation. And so some of the common symptoms that we look for when we're considering testosterone replacement therapy is fatigue, low motivation, things like depression, low libido, erectile dysfunction, even loss of muscle mass are all kind of indicating that your body is maybe needing more of that androgen receptor activity and it's flashing the signs that, hey, my oil's a little low here. But it's important to note that testosterone isn't the only thing that can cause these symptoms. I mean, fatigue is one of the most common reasons people go into a doctor to get help to try and find out what's going wrong. So a thorough checkup is essential, not just checking your hormone levels, not just checking your testosterone levels, but looking more broadly at a bunch of other things. But when you do get your blood evaluation, one of the things, of course, you are going to be looking looking at is the testosterone total and the testosterone free estradiol PSA luteinizing hormone which is the signal that comes from the brain to the testes to make the testosterone and other things like vitamin levels and other hormone levels like cortisol thyroid even prolactin which comes from the brain as well is important to rule out that you're not having a problem with a pituitary tumor that's causing your low testosterone levels things like sex hormone binding globulin can also be useful in some instances so just like a diagnostic for your car the tests plus the symptoms are going to kind of guide you in the right direction in terms of whether or not your symptoms and problems are coming from low testosterone or perhaps something else and if it looks like mostly the main thing that can be found is low testosterone then there definitely are some benefits there for you and you likely will feel better in some of the ways that we described. But there are possible side effects to be aware of before hopping on that testosterone as well. So let's look at some of those possible side effects, both short-term and long-term side effects to be aware. So of course, the testosterone replacement therapy can help in a lot of ways that we already described. But just like every car is a little bit unique and slightly different, this is even more so with humans. So it's critical to kind of know what the expectations are, realistic expectations going in. It's not really like a magic potent, but when used correctly, it can really help in a lot of different ways. It can really be a game changer to your health and mood in the right person at the right time. So some of the short-term side effects that are kind of expected uh, to happen are basically just the consequence of being on testosterone. So you can get increased estrogen levels. You can get higher prostate, prostate specific antigen levels or PSA, symptoms of high estrogen with that could be like feeling more prone to crying, even nipple sensitivity or growth of the breast tissue or gynecomastia and also get increase in red blood cell production and higher blood pressure can sometimes happen in some subsets. Even irritability, decreased ability to sleep, maybe trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, even sleep apnea can occur in some people or worsening of sleep apnea. So if you're already having some of these things, you want to lean towards being on a lower dose and a higher dose because because too much will definitely make those things worse. So you want to be very cautious about how you're approaching the testosterone replacement therapy. And most of the time, these things are more like a little speed bump versus chronic problems. And so, you know, it's a speed bump, meaning that, you know, they may occur and you make adjustments, either taking things to lower the estrogen or changing up the dosing frequency or the overall amount that you're taking to mitigate or to steer your body clear from some of these symptoms. So pretty much all the things that were mentioned here are somewhat avoidable by changing the dose, changing the frequency, or adding in some estrogen blocking capacity or something to help improve your body's elimination of that estrogen. There's other videos that I've done on these types of things, so you can check those out as well. But there are also some long-term consequences of being on testosterone replacement therapy that you definitely want to be aware of as well. And those are going to be things like issues with fertility and issues with producing testosterone uh, long-term on your own without the replacement therapy. And then also hair loss, I think I would put 
put in the long-term consequences as well. So with fertility, you know, TRT can reduce your, in most cases, it's going to reduce your ability to produce spermatozoa. And it's kind of like turning off or ramping down the factory that's used to make the sperm in your body. And so if you're planning on having kids, this is something you need to consider seriously and understand. If you're on testosterone replacement therapy for six months, 12 months, it's likely that your factory will come back. Your pr production of sperm is going to come back no matter you know, if you're taking something to help that or not. The longer you're on it, the more likelihood that there may be some permanent damage. And so in cases where you really are thinking about having children in the future, you want to be taking something like HCG along with the testosterone replacement therapy. That's going to keep the production going while you're on the therapy, but you're still going to have some decreased production. You're not going to remain perfectly fertile just because you're taking some HCG. Now, the higher the dose of HCG, the higher the production of spermatozoa as well. Well, the decreased natural production of testosterone, the same kind of thing is happening there. As you're taking the testosterone, your brain isn't producing the things to stimulate your testes to make the sperm and make the testosterone. And so your natural production is going to decrease during the testosterone replacement therapy. And if you stop the therapy, your levels will be significantly lower when, you know, you're starting up here, you go on the replacement therapy, you're up here. Then when you stop, you know, you're going to be below this starting point over here. And that's just because your brain is not getting the signal to make the testosterone. So it's going to take a while for that signal to come back online. And I've done other videos discussing that in a lot more detail than I'm going to hear. So if you want to check those out, definitely look into that. But over time, sometimes weeks, sometimes months, it typically comes back to where you started from. And again, it is going to matter if you're on testosterone replacement therapy for six months versus six years, you know, it may take much longer for it to come back. And so there's things you can take like the HCG or Clomid and things like that, that kind of will restart that process. But in my experience, most cases, it, it does come back over time. But it's not going to go back to where you were when you're actually on the testosterone, just your baseline level. So the last thing to discuss is hair loss. So the longer you're on testosterone replacement therapy, the more DHT you're going to be producing and the more that DHT is going to bind to the hair follicles, which is going to start to miniaturize and shrink the hair follicles and decrease the amount of hair that's coming out, the size and frequency that that hair is going to grow. And over time, that's thought to lead to male hair pattern baldness. There are other possible mechanisms involved with this, but the DHT is definitely the leading known cause for hair loss. And so because when you're on testosterone replacement therapy, your body's making more DHT, it's natural that it's going to lead to more hair loss. And I've definitely seen this in my practice. So you want to just know about that going into it and possibly head that off by measuring your DHT and making sure you're taking appropriate steps to keep that DHT in check by adjusting your dose or using other methods if needed. The other thing is it's not going to happen right away. It's usually going to be months into taking the testosterone. We're going to start seeing that activity occur. So now that we got all the side effects out of the way, maybe you're ready to uh, consider starting testosterone replacement therapy. And there are some different administration methods to consider. And each one kind of has its pros and cons. And I may do a separate video kind of analyzing all of those. But for here, I just want to mostly list them and give some brief descriptions about them. So there's testosterone, gels, and creams. The creams are usually compounded, and the disadvantage with uh, those are that the amount that your body can absorb is somewhat limited, and you may not be able to absorb it through your skin in general. Same thing with the gels. And there are, of course, injections. With the injections versus the gels and creams, you're getting a much higher peak in that testosterone when you first inject it. Now you can break the injections up into several throughout the week. That can sometimes even out those spikes, but you're going to have much less of a spike with the topical because you're using it every day versus once a week with the injections or twice a week with the injections. Injections are the most common method of testosterone replacement therapy, but I do have many patients that use uh, topicals that seem to work just fine. There's also oral tablets of testosterone, and these are less commonly used due to the potential for liver issues, but there are some newer formulations that don't seem to carry the same risk. This one I don't have as much experience with, and it is usually pretty expensive to get it, but these things may change at some point. So I think the administration method can significantly impact your experience with testosterone replacement therapy. So it's important to, you know, really go into and understanding what the best fit is going to be for you, for your personality. You may not like needles. 
but you may not absorb the topical either. So make sure you understand that going into it. And then also wanted to talk about the monitoring and adjustment period. And this is important to dovetail in with the administration method too, because you want to make sure you're verifying that your levels are correct in whatever administration method you use. You do want to check to make sure your levels are increasing and they're not increasing too much. Regular monitoring is crucial to ensure that it's working effectively and that you're safe in the range that you're in. And so you're gonna wanna have periodic blood tests to check your testosterone, estrogen, PSA, red blood cells, and things like that to make sure things are not getting wildly out of control. Initially, you're gonna do it more frequently and then spread it out. Usually you wanna do it a couple times a year, maybe three, four times a year at max. Sometimes people have a lot of things going on, so they're gonna do it a lot more just because they need adjustments in their dose frequency, et cetera. And so back to the car analogy, you know, sometimes your car needs tuning. And so we wanna tune the amount of testosterone, the dosage and the frequency and also whether or not you need something to reduce your estrogen, et cetera. Over time, your body may be changing how it's responding to the testosterone. So it's important to periodically check in and make sure those levels aren't changing as much. Usually over the course of 12 to 18 months, that's when most of the changes are gonna occur. And after that, it's gonna be pretty stable as long as you've been making adjustments along the way. But there's always gonna be potential changes in things like PSA and, and red blood cells that need to be monitored. So that regular monitoring is going to be important to make sure you're avoiding or steering clear of some of the potential side effects you can get from testosterone replacement therapy. And it requires ongoing attention to achieve the best out outcomes. It's not really a set it and forget it kind of treatment. So if you're finding this information helpful and you wanna dig in deeper into some of the topics that we covered here on testosterone replacement therapy, you might wanna look in the playlist section on my YouTube channel and find the playlist for testosterone replacement therapy. There's a lot of good detailed information in that playlist on things like dosing, dosages, estrogen levels, how to test for estrogen and monitor those things. So hopefully this video gives you a clear roadmap to take on your journey with testosterone replacement therapy. If you do still have questions on anything that was mentioned here or other questions related to TRT, drop those in the comment section. Happy to answer your question. If you do want a more customized, detailed answer, consider joining the membership program. We'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your questions. Now, one question you might have after checking out this video is on testosterone dosages, and you can find some nice detailed information on that in this video here.